And it's more than four decades worth of entertainment. Saturday Night Live has provided so many classical moments that it's turned into a cultural institution and some would even say the pinnacle of comedy. The geniuses behind SNL sketches have never been afraid to tackle issues others wouldn't even dare talk about. While there are those who admired SNL's guts, the show has also had its fair share of scandals and controversies. Welcome to The Bestest, the channel that provides you the bestest news and videos you should know about. On today's episode, we're looking at the top 10 SNL sketches that may have raised a few eyebrows. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to get front seats to the bestest upcoming videos. At number 10, Chevy Chase using the N-word. In 1975, Chase and Pryor appeared in a sketch together. Chase's character interviewed Pryor's character, who was applying for a janitorial position. They then play a word association game, which was harmless at first until they descend into racial slurs and Chase says the N-word live on air. Spade! Hunky hunky! <laughs> At the time, the sketch was considered groundbreaking, with the Rolling Stones even writing, it could be the last time a white guy said the n-word on TV and actually diffused racial tensions, then ignited them. But the sketch has definitely not aged well, and SNL has since gained a lot of flake for it. Today, no one is allowed to say a racial slur on the show, especially to a person of color. At number 9, the Canteen Boy Sketch. In 1994, SNL managed to make people turn off their TVs when it aired the Canteen Boy Goes Camping Sketch. In the sketch, Adam Sandler, who played the role of a juvenile camper, received unwanted advances from his hairy old scoutmaster played by Alec Baldwin. Although no actual molestation occurred in the sketch, NBC received several complaints from the viewers and from the Boy Scouts of America. The skit was called for being homophobic and trivialized pedophilia. SNL reruns the skit now, including a disclaimer stating that Sandler was 27 years old at the time it was filmed. You, you guys used to be real tight. Hey, canteen boys, just bring back any memories? Oh! <laughs> Reggie! Reggie! <laughs> Next up at number 8, Chippendales Edition. This episode was so controversial, there are those who say it was one of the reasons Chris Farley died of drug overdose seven years later. In this 1990s skit, Farley and host Patrick Swayze had to perform a strip tease to get a job at Chippendale. The joke was that it would be impossible for Farley's character to get the job because of his weight. It was supposed to be funny, but as the Washington Post once wrote, body shaming is no longer cool or funny. Washington Post further reported that, when asked about it, Farley said, Although I love this kind of comedy, sometimes I feel trapped by always having to be the most outrageous guy in the room. Fellow cast member Chris Rock was not a fan of the skit either. There's no comic twist to it, it's just mean, he says. But that wouldn't be the last time SNL made fun of people's physical attributes. At number 7, The Weekend Update. In 2008, cast member Fred Armisen played New York Governor David Patterson, who is legally blind. Armisen would squint his eyes and, as a joke, act like he is too stupid to do menial tasks like holding up charts correctly. Governor Patterson's office criticized the sketch, saying that although the governor can take a joke, this particular skit was too offensive and it chose to ridicule people with physical disabilities and imply that they are incapable of having jobs with serious responsibilities. Armisen had later on apologized and promised to be more respectful of people with disabilities. At number 6, A Battered Tiger Woods in 2009, the world-famous golfer became the stuff of scandals for accusations of being a womanizer and a cheater. Of course, SNL just had to poke fun at the scandal. 
In one of its skits, Keenan Thompson played Woods, who kept going off camera and coming back with more injuries because his wife, played by Blake Lively, was beating him. The episode was met with criticism with the executive director of National Coalition Against Domestic Violence stating that it made such mockery of domestic abuse. But domestic abuse is not the only issue SNL has ever made light of. And number five, we have Louis C.K.'s molestation jokes. When comedian and actor Louis C.K. guested in 2015, he thought it would be a brilliant idea to joke about child molesters during his opening monologue. He said he was disappointed that the child molester in his neighborhood didn't seem to be interested in him growing up. He then went on to jokingly try and understand what child molesters' motivations are. Naturally, the skit was not well received, with people even saying it was the unfunniest, most offensive SNL monologue. But what could have been more controversial than child molestation jokes? Stick around, cause we have a few more and number one will surely shock you. There was a child molester that lived in my hometown. And it wasn't a big deal. It was like, we caught a child molester. It was just like, yeah, that's the house where the child molester lives. He lives right here. At number four, we have Jesus coaching NFL players. In a 2011 SNL sketch, Taron Killam appeared as Denver Broncos quarterback Tim Tebow, while Jason Sudeikis played Jesus. In the skit, Jesus talks about helping the Broncos win and hints at how Tebow's constant praying has been annoying him. Jesus then ends the sketch by saying, Oh, by the way, Mormonism, all true every single word. To nobody's surprise, religious groups did not like how they show ridiculed Jesus. But SNL just loves making fun of religion. In fact, at number 3, we have the Jesus Uncrossed. When SNL aired the movie trailer spoof The Jesus Uncrossed, just about everybody expected Christian organizations to be offended. Turns out, it offended at least one Islamic anti-defamation group even more. In this sketch, Christoph Waltz was presented a machine gun wielding son of God who was out for revenge on the Romans who wronged him. The skit sparked so much anger that even Sears yanked their ad spots shortly after. Moving on to number 2, the ISIS sketch. In 2015, SNL became the subject of debates left and right after the father-daughter tandem of Tara Ann Killam and Dakota Johnson aired. The sketch started off rather emotionally as Killam dropped his daughter off to the airport and the two exchanged an emotional goodbye. Viewers are led to think that she is going to the military, but the sketch takes a youthful turn when a car pulls up to reveal men holding guns, and Dakota reassures her father by saying, Dad, it's just ISIS. The sketch then ends with the words, ISIS, we'll take it from here, Dad. The skit did not sit well with people who took on to social media to say that terrorism was no laughing matter. We're finally down to SNL's most controversial sketch yet, and it's one that's unlikely to ever move from the top spot. At number one, we have Sinead O'Connor tears up the Pope. Talk about religion and you might spark a debate. Include a religious figures in a comedic sketch and you're likely to spark controversy. Now, involve the Vatican and you've got yourself more than a controversy. You make international headlines. On October 3, 1992, O'Connor caused a global firestorm during her appearance on SNL as a musical guest. She sang on a cappella version of Bob Marley's song, War, and changed the lyrics a bit to say child abuse instead of racism to protest the sexual abuse in the Roman Catholic Church. As she got to the song's final verse, she presented a photo of Pope John Paul II to the camera while singing the word evil. She then tore the photo into pieces on live television, said fight the real enemy and threw the pieces towards the camera. Damn! SNL, which had no foreknowledge of O'Connor's plan, has since banned her from the show. 
During dress rehearsals, she reportedly held up a picture of a starving African child instead. NBC Vice President Rick Ludwin recalled literally jumping out of his chair when he saw the Pope's photo. The people in the control booth were discussing whether to cut the cameras away from the singer, but it was all too late. The SNL director of the episode decided to not light up the applause signs, so O'Connor was left in darkness and silence. What's worse was that it happened halfway through the live show, so the shaken cast had no choice but to finish the episode. At the end of the show, guest host Tim Robbins did not acknowledge nor thank Sinead O'Connor. NBC received more than 500 calls the day after, and the Vatican itself issued a statement. As part of SNL's apology, the following week, host Joe Pesci opened the show and, during his monologue, held up the Pope's photo, explaining he'd tape it back together. He then tore up a photo of Sinead O'Connor, which received huge applause from the audience. Do you think any of these SNL sketches got more flake than it deserved? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe to The Bestest and hit the bell to access more of our videos. Thank you so much for watching and until our next Bestest video.